Good afternoon. 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 Good day. I hope you guys are all right. I am well, thank you. Afternoon, thank you. Um, I'm going to start now. I'm not going to wait for everyone to join if they will catch us because what I've decided uh, with binomial distribution as well is to also do a summary of what you need to know about binomial distribution. And then we go into doing some exercises. So there will be a lot of explaining. I hope you also have a tables, your statistical tables, either from your study guide or from your prescribed book, or if you have past exam paper, you do, you did bring um, the the table, statistical tables that we're going to use today. So we're still going to continue with study unit five, which is part of uh, your assignment two. Um, and I think you also did see the email from uh, your lecturer. Uh, I think that he posted it on my UNISA to say the assignment two will only be open um, second or I think two weeks before uh, the due date. So uh, you still have time to catch up on some of the work and then when the assignment two is open, then you can start, you can do your first um, your first submission and at least by then we would have gone through all the work that is needed for you to know and understand assignment to uh, content as well. So without wasting any time, so we're going to do binomial distribution. By the end of the session today, you should learn how um, some basic properties of binomial distribution. You should learn how to calculate the mean, the variance and the standard deviation of a binomial probability distribution and also how to calculate or find the probability of a binomial distribution. Yeah. So with binomial distribution, because I also already told you that it's part of chapter or study unit five, um, under uh, study unit five, we did do the discrete probabilities and now we're going into looking at binomial distribution and next week, we're going to look at Poisson. You do not cover hypergeometric um, probability distributions. Uh, and then later on, as we go along, we're going to do uh, study unit six, which includes um, continuous probabilities. Um, but we will get to that uh, in a couple of weeks time. In terms of binomial distribution, I get rid of this thing. Okay, it's gone. Uh, in terms of binomial distribution, it comes from a counting process as well. So you will always have a number of fixed observations. I like, for example, when you are creating an event and you're tossing a coin, if you toss it 15 times, you are creating some observation or some events um, of those tosses and you're tossing it 15 times. Those 15 times are your number of trials that you are creating. Uh, and each observation is categorized as whether or not the event will occur. So here we're talking about um, uh, a success or a failure of an event happening as well. For example, when you have a coin, it has two sides, a head or a tail. When you create an event, it, it lands either on a head or it will land on a tail. And those are the two categories that you can count and you can record on. Uh, when the probability of an event that you require or it is of your interest, we call that the probability of success and it's always denoted by a pi psi, which is that sign. The pi psi always denotes a probability of success and a probability of failure will be a complement of a success, which will be one minus the probability of success, which is the probability of failure. 
And also what you need to also remember with binomial probability is just is that um, there will be a constant probability for the event of interest, which is your probability of success for each observation. For example, when you toss a coin, um, the probability that it will land on a head will be a half because there are two outcomes of tossing only one coin. And if I'm tossing two coins, then you do the, 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 the number of trials will increase um, based on the number of times that you are tossing that um, coin. Uh, so the probability of getting a tail is the same um, is the same for each time you toss a coin because the to coin has only one sample space and when I toss that coin, that probability will always be a half because there are only two sides to that coin. Your observation needs to be independent, so one observation should not have any effect on the other or should not have any influence on the other, so they should be independent of one another. And we know with a coin, the number of times you, you toss a coin, whether it, it lands on a head will not have any bearing on whether it will land on a tail or it will land on a head as well. So the outcome of one observation does not affect the other outcome as well. Um, and also, uh, this is just for additional uh, knowledge as well. The type of sampling method that you can use to deliver an independent can be two. You can do this in terms of infinite uh, population where you do th um, the sampling of the events in terms of uh, making sure that you do not replace the coin after you take it, after you've tossed it, you get a new coin, and that will create an independent event uh, in terms of how you toss the coin. And then it can also come from a finite population with replacement, for example, using the same coin um, and tossing the same coin several times, but making sure that the outcome that comes from there, they are independent as well. With properties of a binomial distribution, you should be able to calculate as well the mean and the variance and the standard deviation. To calculate the mean of a binomial distribution, we use this formula. The mean is also referred to as the expected value, and it is calculated by using the number of trials times the probability of success, which is n times pi, and the variance is <coughs> the number of trials times the probability of success times the probability of failure or one minus the probability of success and the standard deviation will be the square root of your variant. Just taking the square root of your variant. How do we then do this? Um, how do we calculate the mean? So if I'm given that my n for this um, data that I'm given follows a binomial distribution and I'm told that the n is 5 and my probability of success is 0 0.1. What is my expected value? So my expected value will be n times pi, which my pi is 0 0.1. My n is 5, so it's 5 times 0 0.1, which will give me 0 0.5. To calculate the standard deviation, I'll take the square root of the variance which is the square root of n times pi times 1 minus pi. So it will be the square root of 5 times 0 0.1 uh, times 1 minus 0 0.1, and that will give me 0 0.708. And I'm just going to ask you to calculate the mean, calculate the mean of this when I have my n of 5 and my pi of 0 0.5. What will be the mean? That is your exercise. Calculate the expected value or the mean. What I'm asking you is to calculate the expected value or the mean of this data set at the bottom. Um, it will be 5 multiplied by 0, 0,5, which is 
So it'll be 5 multiplied by 0 0.5, which is 2.5. Correct. Calculate the standard deviation. Calculate the standard deviation, which is the square root of n times pi times 1 minus pi. It will be the square root of, um, sorry, <laughs> I just made a mistake there. It will be the square root of 2,5, which is the mean that we just got up there. Um, bracket 1 minus 0, 0,5, which is 1,118. So it will be the square root of... 5 times 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5, which is equals to 1.118. Uh, 1 Are there any questions? Is there any query question? Something that you don't understand? This should be straightforward, right? Um, I have a question. Yes. Do we use the calculator to calculate this? Yes, you use the calculator. The stat mode? Nope, you use your normal calculator. This is just the normal maths calculations. Thank you. What type of a calculator do you have? It's a shop. Do you have a shop? Yeah, you use a normal calculator. So you know how to use your calculator to find the square root and all that, right? Yes, to find the square root, yes. Yeah. Um, my question is, okay, looks like the pi is always um, given or is changing because I noticed yes. that there's a pi time no. calculator, so I guess that's yeah. quite a question. Yeah. This is the symbol, it's not the pi, it's, this is not a pi, this is a symbol we use for the probability of success. It will always, they will give it to you or you will have to calculate it. Remember, if they haven't given it to you, your pi will be the number satisfying that outcome divide by how many they are. It's always the same because it is a probability. It's a probability of success. So if they didn't give you, they would have given you some records or outcomes and the number of or your sample space where you can calculate that probability. So if you, you still need to remember what we've learned when we learned the basic probabilities as well. Okay, so that is just the symbol. It's not the one on your calculator where you select the pi. Always remember that. Let's look at another example, which is more of your theory than calculations because you are also expected to know some theory about statistics. So you, not all the questions will always be calculations. So which one of the following is not a property of a binomial? We just touched on some of these things. So I, I'm not expecting you to know everything, but let's try and answer it. We'll go through each statement um, together and see if it's true or false, and then we can answer because we're looking for not a property of a binomial. So each trial has, uh, each experiment has n trial. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. That is correct because um, if I toss a coin, 15 times 15 will be by my number of trials that I am creating. The n trials are independent of each other. Uh, that would be <laughs> true. That is also correct because we said all outcomes or experiments needs to be independent. Each trial has two possible outcomes that are mutually exclusive, a success and a failure. True. That it is true because we also spoke about this. That is for success, the probability of calculating that will be a pi and for a failure, it will be one minus a pi. 
the probability of that. And we know that they cannot both happen at the same time, so therefore they will be mutually exclusive, yes. Because a head and a tail cannot happen at the same time. The probability of success remains the same for all trials? No. Not true. That will not be true because, for example, if I have a die, the probability of success for a die will be different because a die has six sides. So a probability of getting a one will be one divided by six. A probability of getting two will be one divided by six because there is only one side with a two. And when I toss a coin, the probability of getting a tail will be one over two. So a one over two, which is half, is different to one over six, which is, what is one over six? I should have used um, one divided by six, which is 0 0.17. So they are different for each trial, so that uh, the probability of success remain the same for all trials will be incorrect because they will be different. The probability of success is always a half because of the outcomes there are two. And here we're talking about when we're looking at um, the basic probability of uh, binomial distribution where there are only two outcomes. But correct. That will be correct because a success and a failure, it will always be one over two for those ones. Uh, but for all the trials will be different. So you, you must also pay attention because here we interchange or we have trials and then we also have outcomes because within a trial you get outcomes, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Some of the question might look like this. Africa Check found that the source of fake news on Facebook are mostly ghost profile. Suppose that 20% of the profiles on Facebook are ghost profiles. Suppose further that we randomly select 20 Facebook profiles and check whether or not they are ghost profiles. So before I can answer the question, I must just go back and reread the statement and make sense of what is happening here. The, this is what's going to happen when you answer the questions in the exam. You need to be able to recognize whether is this question a binomial, is this question a basic probability, is this question a normal distribution question, because they are all closer to one another. One thing for sure that I can make you at ease is that your, the questions you receive in your exam follow the same pattern as the chapter or the study unit of your material. For, so for example, the first question will come from chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, probably because they are mostly like linked. The third and fourth question might come from the um, study unit three uh, and study, and there can be two questions per study, per study unit. And then the question number six and seven will come from study unit four, like that, like that. So they will always follow the same structure of your study guide. When you are writing your assignment as well, because you're only using two chapters to write your assignment, the first few questions will be from one study unit to the next to the next. So you just need to make sure that you understand the question asked in order to apply and know uh, from which study unit, what kind of formulas you will need to apply and so on. But we will get to that when we do the exam prep as well. So in terms of this question, let's go back and read and understand what the question is saying in relation to binomial distribution. Africa Check found that the source of fake news on Facebook are mostly ghost profiles. So therefore it means somewhere, I'm just gonna highlight the mostly ghost profile. So somewhere ghost profile is either a success or a failure. Suppose that 20% of the profiles on Facebook are ghost profiles, so therefore it means my ghost profile are my probability, are my success 
So suppose that 20% of them, so they for year, this 20% is my probability of success, and I can say it is 0 0.30. That is the probability of success for ghost profile. So the probability of failure in this regard will be not a ghost profile. That will be a failure because if the researcher is interested in ghost profile, that is the probability of interest, which is your success probability. Uh, suppose that we randomly select 20 Facebook profiles. So we select 20 Facebook profiles. So that is our N. And check whether or not they are ghost profile. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? So it means we need to evaluate each statement with regards to the information given to us at the top. So we're going to do this also together, right? The given information, the given information describe a binomial experiment with possible outcome, ghost profile or not ghost profile. Is that correct or incorrect? Correct. That is correct, correct because we have two outcomes, ghost profile and not ghost profile. Yes. Number two, the number of trials is 20. Correct. correct. That is correct because our N is 20. We just established that. The 20 trials are independent of each other. Correct. That will be correct in terms of ghost profile and not ghost profile. They cannot influence one another, so they do not affect each other. The probability of success or ghost profile is 20 trans. Incorrect. Correct. Is it correct or incorrect? I had two correct. answers. Correct. Are you saying correct? Yes. You need, you need to pay attention. Probability is between 0 and 1. Here it says the probability of success or ghost profile is 20 trials. Incorrect. False. That should that should have already given you a hint that if this value is bigger than one, therefore it's not a probability, so it will be incorrect. And that is something that you always have to remember when we work with probability. If the question was asking you calculate the probability and you get more than one, then you know that it is not correct. So it needs to be one or hundred percent or less. So this is the incorrect one. The probability of failure or not ghost profile is 0 0,8. Correct. That is correct because this is our probability of failure, which is one minus 0 0,20 which will be 0 0,80 because we know that the probability of success is 0 0,20. So this one should have said 0 0,20, not 20 trials. And also here yeah, by mentioning trials makes it incorrect. Okay, so it should be easy like this to answer questions relating to binomial distribution. Based on what we just learned, calculate the mean based on this information. So it's still the same as what we had. So the probability of success is 0 0,20. And then this is our N. The question here is calculate the expected mean. Oh, let me write it the way they wrote it here. Yeah, it's the mean, which is the mu. They are asking you to calculate the mean. And they are also asking you to calculate the standard deviation, which is the square root of n times the probability of success, one minus the probability of success. So that is what they are asking you. That is your information.
the mean is four and the standard deviation is 1.79. Okay, how do we calculate the mean? It is 20 times 0 0.20. 20 times 0 0.20, which is equals to 4, right? Yes. And standard deviation? Square root of? Mm. Or? Okay. We just substitute the values as we see them. Okay. 20 times 0 0.20 times 1 minus 0 0.20. And the answer? That is 4 times 0 0.8. Square root of four times zero point eight. One point seven nine, which is option number two. Happiness. Are we happy? Are we good? Yes, happy. Yep. Good. Great. Okay, so those are the basic properties of a binomial distribution. If you have any questions before I move on, now we're going into how do we calculate the probabilities. Do you have any question relating to the basic probabilities? basic properties of a binomial probability distribution. Hi, Lizzie, did you also get 1.79? Because I got 1.844. It's the same. Uh, double check your answer. I can also double check from my side. So it is square root of 20 times 0.2 times and 8 and 1 comma 7 8 8 8 8 5 4 3 8 2 which if you round it off to two decimal it's 1 comma 7 9 so just double check that you substituted correctly and you multiplied correctly and you took the square root correctly. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, Let's look at how we calculate the probability of a binomial distribution. So we dealt with counting rules as part of the basic probabilities as well. A binomial distribution also uses some counting techniques in its formula. And we remember those counting techniques like our factorials, um, combination, permutation, uh, multiplication rules and so on and so forth. So a binomial distribution also use some counting techniques. So suppose the event of interest is obtaining heads on a toss of a fair coin. You are to toss the coin three times. And if we need to find out in how many number of ways can we get these two heads? If that is the uh, question that was asked, and the possible ways will be either when you toss in the three coin, one time it can land on a head, a head and a tail, or a head, a tail and a head, or a tail, a head and a head. So those three coins can have those scenarios. There are three ways that you can get two heads. Um, remember, there are other times that you can get different but not get it the head like you can you can toss the 
um, all those three coins and they all land on heads. Therefore, it means there are three heads. So here we're checking how many times, uh, how many ways can we get two heads, um, regardless of the, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, order. Remember, yeah, they are not talking about order. So that is why we're going to use um, what we call a combination because combination has no order to it. So, <clears throat> and this will be the formula that you will use normally when you answer the question in terms of the tail, um, in terms of combination. So we will use the NCR or NCS, <clears throat> or we can use the formula that looks like N factorial divided by x factorial and minus x factorial so that we can find the number of ways um, the three coins will land on at least two heads. I'm not going to do any exercise in terms of this because we did, we dealt with them in the basic probabilities. You can go and watch how we, how we calculate the counting roots. I was just introducing it. So in terms of a binomial distribution <coughs> formula, uh, which you need to know how to calculate it, but it's not necessarily that you need to use it as you calculate the probabilities, but you need to know how it looks and how you calculate the binomial distribution, uh, probability distribution. You need to know that because sometimes in your ex exam or assignment, your lecturer can just give you um, the formula as an option and with already populated values that you need to be able to say, oh, this is a binomial formula and these are the correct way of substituting the values or this is the correct way of calculating um, a binomial probability distribution. So. With a binomial probability distribution, we use, or it has two parts to it. The first part, which is the counting process, and the second part, which is the probability process. So here we want to calculate the probability of how many number of ways you can do certain things. For example, I like to use the Lotto because um, Lotto has money. So if you want, you can count how many number of ways you can win Lotto. And you can also use this to calculate the probability of you winning the lotto by using this formula. So this part, the first part will tell you how many number of ways you can win the lotto. Combining the number of ways you can win the lotto and the probability of the binomial probability formula, you can calculate the probability, the chance of you winning the lotto. And that is this probability function. Okay. So we will use this to calculate the probability of an outcome, whether is it a, an outcome of one or an outcome of two, but those outcome needs to belong to a, a trial and how many number of trials will that there be. And also you will be given the probability of success in order for you to be able to answer the question. So in the question, you will be told how many number of X of outcomes you will have to calculate for, but they will give you in the statement the number of trials and the probability of success. If they didn't give you the probability of success, probably they gave you your outcomes that satisfy the probability of success and the sample space, and you can calculate that um, probability of success. Let's look at the examples. What is the probability of one success in five observations if the probability of an invest of, uh, event of interest is 0 0.1? What is the probability of one success in five observations if the probability of interest is 0 0.1? So our one is our X. We want to know the probability of X. In five observations, which are the number of trials that we have, which is our N, and the probability of success is 0 0.1. Using our formula, we just substitute the value. Our N is 5, 5 factorial uh, divided by your X factorial, which is 1, your N minus X factorial, 5 minus 1, 
times the probability of success, which is 0 0.1 to the power of x, x is 1, 1 minus the probability of success of 0 0.1 to the power of n minus x, which is 5 minus 1. And solving this equation, then we get 5 multiply, because if you solve the combination function, you will get a 5. 0 0.1 to the power of 1 is 0 0.1. 1 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9, 5 minus 1 is 4, and solving this, we will get the probability of 0 0.32805. And that is how you will calculate the probabilities of a binomial distribution. Now, the challenge with this formula is that if you need to calculate the probability of greater than or the probability of less than, it then becomes difficult because if here they would have said find the probability of less than one, therefore it means to find the probability of x less than one, we know that that is the probability of x is equals to one plus the probability of x is equals to zero. Oh, let's start with zero, zero, and x is equals to one. Oh, but then I said less, right? Let's say less than or equal. Let's put less than or equal. Sorry about the confusion. So if I need to find the probability of x less than or equal, then it means I need to calculate the probability of x is equal to 0 and the probability of x is equal to 1. So I already calculated the probability of x is equal to 1. So it means I need to calculate the probability of x is equal to 0. So therefore, I can use a shortcut. And the shortcut will be my ncr pi x 1 minus pi n minus x and my n is 5 my r is 0 my pi is 0 0.1 my x is 0 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.1 and 5 minus 0 and that will be what is my MCR5 in terms of the calculator. R5, second function, MCR3, uh, zero, zero. And that is equals to one. So that will be one times one times 0 0.1. Nine because zero point one to the power of zero is one, right? Any number to the power of zero will be equals to one, and this will be to the power of four, and the answer will be point nine to the power of four, which is equals to zero point six five. Isn't it to the power of five because it's five minus zero? Oh, yes, it's to the power of five. Yes, you're right. Oh, gosh. Let's blame it on a Sunday. That's to the power of five. Let's fix that to the power of five, which is zero comma five nine zero four nine. And because I'm doing plus, so I'm just going to add both of these answers so that I can find my probability of X less than one. And that will be 0 0.5905. I'm just going to run it off to, uh, it, is it at five decimal? I'm going to leave it at five decimal. 0 0.049 plus 0 0.32805, which is equal to 0 0.91854. As you can see, if I had it's greater than it's greater than one, therefore it means it is two, three, four, five. So I need to calculate this five times in order to answer the question, which is time consuming. And that is the reason why when you deal with binomial probabilities, you need to rely on the tables. And that's what we're going to do just now. So <clears throat> this is another example. I'm not going to go through this example uh, with you. Liz, sorry, before yes. you continue. 
Yep. Um, so when you were calculating the um the NCR, hey, mm -hmm. then it was five. Uh, which function is it when you're doing the five uh, CR on the calculator? It is called NCR. You must look for it. You're using a sharp right? It's on your. I'm using a Casio. You're using a Casio. Yes. Uh, the one those, above or the division sign. Those with the Casio is oh. the one above the division sign. Yes. Yeah. So you first put the five and then you uh -huh. press the shift yes. and then press zero. If, for example, on this one, on number one, we needed to do as five shift. Uh -huh. Five shift. And then you will press the NCR and then you will press the side is what is this one? You had one, right? One and then you press equal, you will see that it will give you five. For okay. this side, it will be five, shift, and CR, and you will press zero and you press equal. And the answer should be one. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So I'm not going to do this exercise, which is almost exactly the same as the one that we did. The probability of success here is 0.02. Um, our x is 2 and our n is 10 and you just calculate the probability. I want to go to the table. Now with your binomial distribution there are two tables. Don't worry if you can't see the tables. I just want to explain the table on this slide and then we'll go to the table tables. So on your tables, they, oh, your tables that you have in front of you probably they have two sides. So there is the bottom and there is the the uh, the top. The bottom for is on one page and then the sorry, the top is on one page, the bottom is also on another page. But if you combine both of those two files and uh, pages and make one be next to the other, underneath the other one and match them, you will see that they will look almost like one table which runs from um, your n values of 2 up until your n values of 10 on one table. There are also other values like n values of 11, 12, 13, and then they are 20 and, and so on. There are also probabilities at the top of your table as you can see there. So how you read the table, the probabilities at the top of your table corresponds with the n and the x on your right. So the top probabilities corresponds with the n and the x on your left. So top with left. The bottom probabilities, if you look at the bottom of this table, when you look at your tables, you will have the bottom. So because your tape, your first table, which I'm referring to as the top table, has also probabilities here at the bottom. So this page combines. Um, so the bottom of the page, there are probabilities as well there, if you look there. So at the top here, it's 0, 0,01. At the bottom here, it's 0, 0, uh, 0, 0,99 because they are complements of one another. But the ones at the bottom corresponds to the n and x at the bottom. And now you need to also pay attention when you read this table. At the bottom, the n starts from 10 and it goes up as well. But also the x value starts from the bottom and goes up. They don't start at the top. You can see they right. They stop at the bottom and they go up. Every n value has the x observation that corresponds with the last x observation will or oh, the last x outcome will be the same as your number of uh, your trials. So you can see that x is up to two there. Therefore, it means your n is also equals to two. Three equals n is three. 4, n is 4. Um, also here, it would have been 9 and n is 9 because I cut off 
the values. Uh, I cut off some five, six, seven, eight from my table so that it can fit on here. And 10 corresponds with the X value of 10. So you need to be able to read this table correctly. Right. Always remember the top values, which are your smaller. So the top values are the small probabilities of success. So the small probability of success are at the top. They correspond with the left hand side n value and x value. So let's say let's say we are on um, n is equals to 10. On the table, when you scroll to the next table, you will notice that there won't be any probabilities at the top. But always remember in your mind that here at the top, it is 0, 0,01. And here at the bottom of this table, it is 0, 0,99. It doesn't matter regardless of where you are on the table. The top has the bottom. They correspond. The sum of the top should be this equals to 1. Uh, the sum of the top and the bottom probabilities, those probability of success, the top and the bottom should give you one. Okay, so how do we read this? Remember our exercise that we used, uh, but we used N of five. We're gonna go to the table just now. Just wanna go to the actual table and answer the same question that we have. Remember, this is the table that I'm referring to and it's also, always going to be called table E6. That's the table. Remember our question that we were answering? Our example, n was equals to 5, x was equals to 1, and the probability of success was equals to 0 0.1, right? Yes. If I remember correctly. And we know that we were looking for the probability of X is equals to one. So because my probability of success is just 0, 0,1, I go to the top of the table, look for 0, 0,1. And then I go to the side of the table and I look for N of five and my X is one. Where they meet, that should be the probability that I'm looking for. And we find the answer as 0, 0,3280. So let's go back to that question, which was this one, 0, 0,3281. See, it's the same. So you can use the table or you can use the formula to calculate, but the table saves you time than the um, than the formula. So let's look at the one that we didn't do, which is this one. It said the probability of success is 0, 0,2, n is 10, and x is 2. So we go probability of success is 0 0.02. Our n, we need to look for n this side, n is 10. We scroll up until we get to 10, and this is our 10. Um, and we know that we are in this column, column number two, right? That's where we are at, column number two. N is 10, and what is our X? X is equals to two. So we go to X of two. And that is 0, 0,153. So what did we get when we were calculating? 0, 0,1531. And that's how you will use the table. Now let's do more ex examples. Before we do more examples, I also want you to remember that in the questions, they might not give you the symbols, they might give you wet phrases, you need to know how to interpret the word phrases into a symbol in order for you to be able to answer the question correctly. If they ask you, sorry. If they ask you 
what is the probability that fewer people are between the ages of 30 and 40? You need to be able to say fewer means less than. If they say at least, you need to know that they mean greater than or equal, things like that. So they still are applicable, whether they say it's between or inclusive and exclusive, all those things, we still need to remember them as we do activities related to binomial distribution. Even next week when we do poison, this is very important as well. So let's look at another example that we can do together. If X follows a binomial distribution with N of 6 and the pi of 0, 0,2, what is the probability that x is less than 3? Those who want to use the formula, you can use the formula. Those who want to use the, the, the table, you can go ahead and use the table. We know that with the formula, we need to go and find, regardless of whether it's the formula or the table, we need to go find the probability that x is 0 plus the probability that x is 1 plus the probability that x is 2 because here it says it's less than 3 so it has to stop at 2 and anything below 2 uh, below 3 and we know that the probability of a binomial is given by n er of pi to the power of x 1 minus pi n minus x and that is the formula you can use if you want to go and calculate this manually. You can use this formula. So you will calculate for x of 0, x of 1, and x of 2 separately and add them together when you are done. So when we use the table, you need to go to the probability of success of 0 0.2, which will be at the top of the table, n of 6, and find the probability where x is 0. So let's go there. We're looking for, let's delete all this. We're looking for 0 0.2. We're looking for n of 6. And we're looking for any value less than 3. So it means I'm going to draw a line here so that I don't miss a thing. And I know that I'm in this column. Okay, so you need to add all these values. I will give you time to write them. Those who haven't, who don't have a, a table in front of you, I'm giving you a chance to write the values down, which is 0, 0,2621 plus 0, 0,3932 plus 0, 0,2458. Are you done? Yes. Okay, give me those values because I need to write them here. I don't have them. What is it's X zero, of 0? Zero, 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 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and the zero last comma two four five eight two four five eight. eight yes which is equal to zero comma nine zero one one which is option number two that's how easy it will be if you use the formula but sometimes remember like i said um, it might be a little bit tricky, so maybe this number, maybe this is not the answer that is on there. Maybe this one also is not there, but here they gave you a formula that looks like this and say the answer is Oh, but then it will not work because here we have less than or equal, but probably they will have something like this. Just going to take a try and say 3 and CR oh, and CR 3C
three, that will be six, three, and they have here yeah, 0 0.2 on i'm gonna leave the option here as correct as like that but i'm just gonna add another option which looks like this maybe even put one minus let's make it interesting and say this is 0 0.8 and they have here yeah, five six minus and it's three as well so something like this uh they might have an answer like that looks like this so if you need to be able to know that this is the this is correct if only the question was just p of x is equals to three then that would be correct in that way so you just need to make sure that you know how to use the formula, not only to use the table alone. So, right. And that is something that you need to get used to. When you are practicing, try to do the answers using a table and also some of them using the formula as well, just for practice purpose. Let's look at this, another example before we go in to doing more exercises. So if, if x follows a binomial distribution with n of 6 and the probability of success is 0 0.75, what is the probability that x is less than 3, which is the same thing? So we are told x is less than 3, which then it means we're still going to have to find the probability of x is 0 plus the probability that x is 1 plus the probability that x is equal to 2, right? So it means coming back here. Oh, somebody's uh, is mute. Is that? Not mute. Yeah. Okay, so we need to go find the probability of success now is 0 0.75, right? And our n is 6, so we go to the table. Remember at the bottom of the table, bottom of the table, which is this one, we are able to identify where 0 0.75 is at. But if we come to this, uh, side of the table there are no values here at the bottom you can write them because if we know that the sum of the top part and the bottom part are equals to one so therefore it means under 0 0.25 there is 0 0.75 right this are our probability of success and here is 0 0.80 and 0 0.85 0 0.90 and on and on and on and on and on and on so those i know that right so i'm looking for n of six uh we're looking for x of zero x of one x of two that's what we have right and our probability of success is 0 0.75 so we need to go to 0 0.75 which is at the bottom then it means we need to use the right hand side now the right hand side not the left hand side so we need to come this side and go and find our n of six and we're looking for zero one and two so those will be the values and where I'm going to stop, it will be at that. So those will be the two values that we are looking for. The three values. So you need to take those three values. I'm going to give you time to write them and then you can give them to me. Are we done? 
Yes. Okay. So for zero, that is zero comma zero 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 two yes. plus zero comma zero zero, zero, zero four, four, four plus zero comma zero three three zero three three zero, which is equals to zero comma zero three seven six. which is option number five. And that's how you use the table. Are we happy? Are we good? Or? Are we great? Good. Good. And that concludes what we supposed to learn about binomial distribution. So we're gonna take the next 30 minutes to just go through some activities, but just to recap on what you have learned You've learned the properties of binomial distribution. You've learned how to calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. And now, lastly, you've learned how to calculate or find the probability of a binomial distribution, either by using the formula or by using the table. Now let's go into doing some more exercises. Your first exercise, which one or which of the following statement is incorrect. So it means we're going to evaluate each and every statement. We can do this together for now. Let's do that. I will, for the ones where it requires you to do some calculations, I can give you some time to look at that. So let's go with option number one says, if the value of a variable depends on the outcome of a experiment, the variable is called a random variable. This is also related to what we have covered last time. I'm not sure, wait, but wait, 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 uh, wait. Um, I'm going to read all the statement just to give you time to to think through all of them and then we'll come back in and, and answer the question. Number two says a discrete random variable takes on a any numerical value with a within a certain interval. Number three says the number of outcomes obtained when two dice are rolled is equals to 36. Number four says the mean of a random variable that follows a binomial distribution with the parameter n and pi is equals to n times pi. Number five, the probability of an event is always on the range of zero and one. That is, the probability of an event lies between 0 and 1. We are looking for that one incorrect statement. Okay, we're going to do this together, but I'm going to direct you in terms of each statement, which one we're going to answer first. So we can start from the bottom and go up. So let's start at the bottom, because I think at the bottom it's easier. The probability of an event is always a range between zero and one. Is that correct or incorrect? Correct. That is true because we know that the probability lies between zero and one. Number four, the mean of a random variable that follows a binomial distribution with the parameter n and pi is equals to n times pi. Is that correct? Correct. That would be correct because we know that the expected value or the mean is equals to n times pi. That is what the question is asking you. Number three, the number of outcomes obtained when two dice are rolled is equals to 36. How many outcomes when we have two dice? How many outcomes will they be? 
Uh, I'm not sure if I'm right, but I think it's true because six times six. I'm just guessing. Um. Uh, okay. From you, your guess is is correct in the way that you are looking at it, but also you can also say um when you're looking at the outcomes anyway you will eventually have to use the multiplication rule as well because if i have a die first die on the on, on at the top having all these sides three four five six right and on this side i can write the outcome of the second die three four five six and i can count the outcomes way because I've got two dice, right? I can count how many outcomes will the first die land on a on a one and the second die also land on a one. So that will be one there. And the first die lands on a two and the second die lands on a one. That will be a point there. If I add all of them, all these outcomes, because it talks about outcomes. If I will add all these outcomes, there will be 36 of them because there are six out of, and there will be six on this. So six times six will give you 36 if you want to use multiplication. Otherwise, like we did with the head, tail, head, you can also do the same to count how many there are, but it will take you forever because there are 36 outcomes that will happen here. So you will count. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, and there are six out of six rows and six columns as well. So there will be 36 rows and columns that you're going to count as well. So that is correct. There will be 36 outcomes. Number one says, if the value of a variable depends on an outcome of an experiment, the variable is called a random variable. Is that correct or incorrect? If you create an experiment, an outcome that will come from that experiment will be a random, will be at random, right? It will not be something that you just picked. It will be a random, and therefore it means the variables or the values that will be from those variables will also be a random variable, will come from a random variable, right? And that is correct. And that is what chapter six or study unit six is all about. It's about using random variable that comes from an experiment. Number three, number two, sorry, number two, it says a discrete random variable takes on any numerical value within a certain interval. What is discrete variables? They are? They are whole numbers. They are whole numbers, so therefore it cannot be from an interval because they come from an, a counting a counting process, not a measuring process as well. So that will be your incorrect statement. Exercise two. Autism South Africa has found that 50% of the people with autism spectrum disorder struggles with social interaction. Assume we randomly select six people living with ASD. What is the probability that only three people live with ASD? What are we given in this? We are given the pi, the x, and the n as well. We are given the pi, which is 0, 0,5. 5. And our n? Uh, is six. 6. And in the question, they are asking us to find the probability that x is equals to? 
three. three because it says only three people, so it's exactly three. Exactly three. Yes. So you can go ahead and go and calculate. Those who would prefer to use manual calculation, you can use the formula n factorial x factorial n minus x factorial pi x one minus pi n minus x or you can use n c r pi to the power of x times one minus pi to the power n minus x or you can use the table table e6 it's up to you what is the correct answer those who are asking on, on the table it's 0 comma 3125 okay so we go to 0 comma 5 now when we look at the table, we do have two 0, 0,5s, right? You will have a 0, 0,5 at the bottom and have 0, 0,5 at the top. You can choose whichever one you want to use. Um, I always prefer to use your N of 0, 0,5 at the top instead of the one at the bottom for easy of calculations. So what else was there? Probability is 0, 0,05, n is 6, x is 3. 0, 0,05, 6, n is 3. And the answer, let me delete this one first. n is 6, x is 3. And we just scroll to the end of the table. And that is the answer. Even if we had used n of that, uh, pi is 0, 0,5, n is 6, we just go to 6, x is 3, we just come, it will give us the same answer. So it's up to you whether you want to use the top, especially for 0 0.5, the top or the bottom, you can choose whichever one you want to use. And the answer is 0, 0.125, uh, 0, 0.3125, which is option three. Western Cape Education Department is interested in addressing shortage of teachers in rural area or schools. Previous study have suggested that one in every four rural schools have a shortage of teachers. Suppose 10 rural schools are selected independent of each other to check whether or not each school has a shortage of teachers. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Before you answer the question, you need to go back to your statement because they are, haven't given you a, a lot, but they have given you as much. So we don't have, we need to find what is the probability of success. We need to identify what is our N and we can then the rest of the questions will come from our statement. So what is our probability of success in terms of what from this statement one in every four because that is the previous study they have given us our x and our n we can calculate x divided by n will give us one over four which is equals to 0 0.25 which is our probability of success our n it told they told us that they selected 10 schools so that will be 10 right yes which one of the following statement is incorrect? So we know that our probability of success is shortage, right? Shortage of teachers 
is our probability of success because it's what the researcher is interested in. Number one, the probability that only three out of 10 has a shortage, meaning find the probability that X is equals to three, where N is 10 and our pi is 0, 0.025. So you will go to the table. This, identify your 0 0.25, N is 10, N is 10 is right at the bottom. So because at the top of the table, I am missing some values. I'm gonna go to the bottom and look for 0 0.25 corresponds to 75, right? So that will be the column that we are using, this one. So this is the column that we're going to be using. Our N is 10, X is 3. It's, three. it's 0, 2503. 0, 2503. Let's see. 0, 2503. This one says 0, 2336, which is not the incorrect. The probability of a school having a shortage of teachers is 0, 0.25. That is correct. That is correct. correct because that is what we just calculated there. And while that of those not having a school shortage is 0, 0.75. The two correct. outcome possible for each trial are a school having a shortage of teachers and a school not having a shortage of teachers. All right. That is correct because that's what they told us they as well in the statement. We're checking whether or not the school has a shortage of teachers, so there will be two outcomes. The expected value of the number of schools with a shortage of teachers is 2.5. So they are asking you to calculate the mean of n times pi. Our n is 10, our i is 0 0.25. So 10 times 0 0.25 is 2.5, which means this is correct. The probability that only 2 out of 10 have a shortage so here we're looking for the probability that X is equals to two. So going back to our question, X is equals to two is just the value above the one that we just found, which is 2, 0 0.2816, which is correct. And that's how you will answer the multiple choice questions, right? By just evaluating all of them, but we know that number one was the incorrect one. I'm not going to do this one for you. You can enter this. We have eight minutes. Suppose that 10% of the butterflies have damaged wings. If a random sample of five butterflies is selected, what is the probability that none of the butterflies have their wings damaged? What is none? It's a zero. It's a zero. So what is the probability that X is equal to zero? Where our pi is zero comma one, comma one. and N, N is five. It's five. I'm just going to go there and leave it for you to find the answer. It's zero comma five nine zero five. We 
know that our what is our pi? Pi is zero comma one zero, right? And our yes. n is five and five. one. X is zero. And X is zero. Happy? Happy. Happiness. Happiness, which is option number one, right? I forgot the number we got. Zero comma. It's zero comma five nine zero five. Zero five. Um, you will also pay attention when you using different books. You will have different different values. So this answer was you or oh, uses five decimals probably because they calculated manually or they used another table that had five decimals. So you just need to pay attention to the tables that you are using as well. Using the binomial distribution, if n is five, the probability that x is one is equals to 0 0.1323. The probability of success is, are you gonna panic? Because here yeah, they're asking you to find pi. No, we're not going to panic because we are told this value comes from the table, right? So we can go to the table where n is 5, x is 3, and we're going to find what the pi is. n is 5, x is 3. Let's go there. n, we're going to use our n n is 5, x is 3, and we're looking for 0, comma, what are we looking for? 0, comma, 1323. We're looking for 0, comma, 1323. We're going to stop when we get this value from that row. 0, comma, 1323. And there we found the value that we we were given and all what we need to do is just go out to the top to go find our answer our answer is 0 comma 3 that is what we were looking for 0 comma 3 easy right so it means when you are writing your assignment, you will not panic a lot when it comes to this type of questions. Suppose that an, admin, uh, an admission test for a certain university is designed so that the probability of passing is 45%. Find the probability that among five candidates who take the test more than three will pass. So here is the thing. Because it says more than three, what does it mean? X of greater than three. Right? So mm. we know what our N is. N is five. Our probability of success is 0, 0,45. So if N is, if N is five, and this says greater than three, so therefore it means we need to find the probability that X is four plus the probability that X is five. So with binomial distribution, it's easy to, to use the table because we know that our N and the last value corresponds to one another. So we cannot go on and on and on and on and on. So you just go to the table where N is five, Pi is 0, 0,45 and find the answer. So let's go there. N is 5. Pi is 0, 0,45. And we know that we're looking for the last two digits on that column. So those will be the two values. Zero comma zero one eight five. So that is zero comma one one two eight. 
181 85 yes 085 085 and the answer is 0 comma 1313 which is option 3 you um we left with one minute There are more questions that I have on the notes that you can also go through on your own. Uh, exercise seven also asks you, the first option asks you to calculate, or oh, actually let's start with the statement. The statement says, suppose five three students were selected um, independently check whether or not each student has a shortage of waiters. Previous study suggests that one out of every four, so you are given X and N, you can calculate the probability of success there, which one of the following is incorrect. You need to find the variance of a binomial. We need to calculate the probability of at most. Um, you need to calculate the probability of at most nine at most one at most nine you need to calculate the probability of at least and at least so those were the question asked um exercise eight given your autism again 50 percent they're asking you calculate the expected the variance and the standard deviation and then answer the the question are they all only a correct or b correct or only c correct or a and b are the only ones that are correct or is it a b and c which one is the correct one and exercise nine looks also at africa check facebook ghost uh you just need to calculate the probabilities here as well probabilities that at all which is exactly exactly Exactly, exactly, and none of the above. You must calculate the probabilities and answer the question. And that will be the last question. Uh, the probability that at least 11 profiles are ghost profiles. So you just need to calculate the probability that X is greater than or equals to 11. Because there are 20 profiles, so it will be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, oh, until 20. So the table has, um, there is n is equals to 20. You should be able to find that from your textbooks or from your study guide, and you can use that to answer the question. With that, it concludes today's session. Thank you for coming. Are there any questions, any comments, any queries, anything you want to know before I leave? Uh, just one thing. I noticed they often gave us a percentage. Will they ever give us, say, for, for example, like half of, like, uh, or a third? Uh, no, they will give it to you as a percentage or if they don't give it to you as a percentage like we did with the previous one, where is that one? Like with this one where you are given your X and N and you can calculate the probability. The same as what I've given you here is another question. There is your X and N. You can just use that to calculate your probability. Uh, so they will either give it to you in this format or they will give you the actual probability or they will give you as a decimal like 0 0.2 or 0 0.02 or like that but they won't say a third or fourth or no don't confuse it like that okay okay elizabeth 
Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Uh, just um, and uh, what is this? I would like to ask this if it's possible, maybe to upload the notes um, before the end of the week, if it's possible on your side, just so that by Sunday, I am ready for I for one. Uh, it's not possible, Shem. I don't want to lie, and I don't even want to promise that. I do my notes Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I'm free. Oh, um, okay. Uh, that is why I only I only give you the notes at, yeah on the day of the session because that's when I I get free time to do this in the morning. Okay. All right. No, that's but fine. I will try. Maybe yeah. I will I will see. Okay. Thank you. That will be really really appreciated. But um, that doesn't stop you from looking at because most of this are, just, um, are from the summary notes that are posted on the yes. yeah on 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 my Unisa. Um, I just I just go through some of the questions and revive some of them or add some of the slides to those summary notes. But most of the most of the things that we go through are already uploaded on my units. It's only just sub the questions that we use in the activities like now that I only try and find some during yeah, in the morning when I'm doing my preparation for the session. OK, no, that's fine. No, I noticed that, that there was a difference between the notes because I've um, downloaded everything all the notes and the sessions that we go through. So I just noticed that, okay, fine, there were more on this one compared to the other ones. Yeah, so the, the yeah. So also remember that the notes that are summary notes that are on there, that are preloaded, corresponds with the videos that I give, I give them to you a week before the session. So that okay. you are able to follow the video and the notes because they correspond. All right. Um, it's only for the session for now that the notes will be different to the rest of the other notes as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's and I will Thank try. You. No problems. <laughs> um, are there any questions? Otherwise, uh, we can enjoy our Sunday. And I'm going to stop the recording. Yeah.